Hi, everybody. It is Wednesday, June 22nd. Um, I think today there's going to be a Zoom clubhouse um, that I'm going to try to get into. We're uh, heading up to the Mountain Winery uh, for tonight's show at 2 o'clock. I'm going to see if there's any any time once I get up there uh, at th after 3 o'clock to uh, jump in. I got the link to it, so it would be fun to... Uh, I miss everybody. It's it's really been hard, uh, you know, after two and a half years of, of doing this to suddenly find myself, you know, not being able to participate constantly like I have been. But um, when the tour ends, I'll be back on a regular schedule with that anyhow. <clears throat> Eye is still red, but it hasn't affected vision or anything. But I've not been near a drugstore or anything. We are in, always in the middle of nowhere. Uh, so I'm keeping an, an eye on it, and, uh, and we'll take it from from there. But um, And then I got some, Stu Ham contacted me this morning with some very sad news that a dear friend of ours, Ove Bosch, who was one of the guys that helped put together the Warwick Base Camps and everything, uh, and a wonderful bassist himself, just passed away of a heart attack at 51. And uh, it's, it's weird. I, I had talked to him a while back, and uh, we were talking about maybe doing some more clinician-type things. So it's, it's, it's surreal, you know, when you get these calls and, and the person's gone. I mean, we just lost, you know, Brett Tuggle and, and now Ove. But uh, it was interesting. The, I, was, I always read all of the comments on all my videos. And there was one the other day. Uh, by an, uh, an artist named Scott McQuaig, who, who wrote in there and he said, I don't know if you'll remember me or not. He says, but we, years ago, we got to do an album in like 1990. Jimmy Bowen brought me to Nashville to do a project with Scott. And, uh, and I remember it. And uh, I dug up some, finally dug up some information. It was very, very hard to get anything. I go to all music and, and, and discogs and all these sites. And generally I can find something, but I finally found something on, on Scott's actual website uh, to see what he's been up to and stuff. And, it's, and it has the information about the project and everything in here. Um, so, you know, as, as kind of a surprise thing, because I, I really did not have that at, at the... Uh, front of my thoughts, but having him write, I mean, it's so interesting how many people that I've done write back to me and, and talk about, oh man, thanks for, you know, mentioning me on here. And, you know, Lyle's been really uh, happy that I've been posting, uh, you know, stuff about him because um, he's great. And I just got a, a, a first um, piece of music from Lari Basilio, fantastic, fantastic Brazilian guitarist. She's amazing. And we did her album, and she just sent me a, a, a track today that she says is going to be the second single. But I think her first single comes out this Friday. But when I actually have real stuff in hand, I'm going to do a day featuring her on here because she's a magnificent uh, musician. But um, so I dug up the stuff and I dug up some tracks from the album that we did with Scott. And I thought, let me go ahead and share, share that. It, it, it's Scott McQuaig is his name. Last name is M-C-Q-U-A-I-G. And this was an album that we did produced by Scott and Jimmy Bowen for Capital in 1990 down in Nashville. And uh, I looked at his thing, and I'm just going to read a little bit about it here, um, just because it'll make it easier to, to move on with the music here. Uh, it says, uh, a native of Meridian, Mississippi, Scott McQuagg began playing guitar when he was 12 and took lessons from Carl Fitzgerald, a Meridian legend known for his musicianship and DJ personality on WMOX radio. Scott met uh, Britt Gully in college and joined his band, The Daybreakers, who played regularly throughout East Mississippi and West Alabama with sets filled with the music of Merle Haggard, Willie Nelson, Waylon Jennings, and Hank Williams. Scott left college and returned to Meridian to pursue music. To support himself and his family, he worked as a machinist. By day and at night, he wrote songs. And on weekends, he continued to play with the Daybreakers. Local promoter uh, Ken Rainey brought him to the attention of Tex Whitson, 
an associate of Merle Haggard for many years. Winning the Jimmy Rogers Talent Show in 1987 led to a demo deal with Jimmy Bowen, president of MCA Universal Records, with the help of Paul Overstreet producing Scott's demo sessions and Paul Davis singing harmony, a recording contract with MCA Records was attained. In November 1988, he went into the studio to record his first album. Scott wrote five of the songs on the self-titled album, which proved his ability as a strong songwriter. Scott was also fortunate to co-write songs with renowned songwriters like Max Barnes, Tom Schuyler, Schuyler, um, Fred Knobloch, uh, Mark Colley, and Mike Reed. His studio band consisted of legendary musicians Reggie Young on guitar, Mark O'Connor on fiddle, me on bass, Eddie Bayers on drums, Matt Rawlings on piano, Billy Joe Walker on acoustic guitar, and Sonny Garish on steel. Um, and then it goes on and on. Uh, to support his newly released self-titled album, Scott visited radio stations all over the U.S. while touring with his band, The Dreamers. He made personal appearances on Ralph Emery's Nashville Now, on stage the, um, the Shotgun uh, Red Variety Show, um, video country hosted by Shelley um, Mangrum, and Country Music Association Annuals Buyers Entertainment uh, Marketplace. Um, and it, 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 he, it, he appeared with such other artists as Garth Brooks and Lionel Cartwright. He performed shows on the road with George Jones, Shenandoah, Alabama, Fern Gosden, Jerry Reed, Marty Stewart, Lori Morgan, Diamond Rio, and the list goes on and on. Uh, let's see if it's got any stuff. Um, Okay, so, I mean, it goes on and on about what he's been up to, but it was just interesting that he, that he had read my, um, my video comments and mentioned his. I was looking for it, and, and the, the comments get all screwed up, and when it says, like, you have, you know, a couple of hundred comments, and then you're looking through, and you can still only find, like, 60 of them or something like that, because I saw it yesterday, and I looked again today for it, and I, I cannot find it. But uh, I was really appreciative of it. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and, and play um, a few of the tracks from the album that we did. Um, so this is um, Scott McQuaig. It's a self-titled album from 1990. And this, al and this track is called My Friend the Bottle. Here, here we go. <laughs> traditional kind of thing. Good friends in this life are so hard to find Like the one who I could talk to that I had to leave behind Cause when I had that label sitting there on the table The level of conversation would reach an all-time high My friend, the bottle He lived on a shelf And he'd come down to comfort When I needed help We had some good times But they're all in the past My friend, the bottle I love the lyrics. I was face down on a cold ground when I opened my eyes. There was my friend, he was broken, and I thought he had died. But when the tears started falling, It was me, not the bottle, about to run dry. My friend, the bottle, he lived on a shelf, and he'd come down to comfort when I needed help. We had some good times, but they're all in the past. My friend, the bottle, and this friend, the glass. Yes, good friends, in this 
this life are so hard to find. I love the idea of this friend the bottle and his friend the glass. <laughs> I mean, just country tunes are just a, such a trip. It's always, uh, I always just sit back and just go, wow. Um, this one is called Old Memory. Here we go. solid country record. I was just noticing if you can see over in the back of the room there, I've got the stacks of pillows and stuff. Whenever I check into a room, any stuff I'm not going to use, like bedding and stuff, I always just move over to an area where it's, you know, they don't have to like wash stuff that wasn't used and all that. It's just, a, I, I, I hate waste. So I try to keep everything in the room as simple as I can, towels and all, I don't use everything up and have it all over the place. Um, yeah, it's, I, I always love doing, I'm, I'm still trying to dig up uh, more records like I did records with Randy Travis and Barbara Mandrell and Lori Morgan, all these people, I'm, I'm still trying to dig things up. Sometimes it's just hard to find where you find an album, but they're crediting, you know, a few different people and you're trying to figure out which tracks you played on. And I've also had some people writing again, just going, asking, it, it, you know, they enjoy the channel, but they want to know if I'm going to be playing anymore. And I absolutely will be playing, but certainly on tour I can't because I don't have an amp in the room with me, which is how I do the play-alongs on it. Um, so that'll have to wait until I, I get back, but then I'll do that and I'll, I might jump in and show a whole bunch of the Lyles tunes because there's some really funny 
uh, interesting quirky parts on them. So I'll do that. But here's another song, um, Take the Smile from Your Face. This is against Scott McQuaig. proud too. Um, Eddie Bayers, I did probably 85% of all the recording I did uh, over the years in Nashville was with Eddie Bayers on drums and he was just inducted into the uh, Hall of Fame, the, the Country Music Hall of Fame as a musician, which is just great, so deserving. He is just such a, an amazing musician and beautiful cat. Uh, I love playing with Eddie. Uh, if he lived in L.A., I'd, I'd try to work with him a whole lot more. But uh, he's been a staple of the uh, Nashville music scene now for, for decades upon decades. I think the first time we played together was probably on Dolly's 9 to 5 album, maybe, or Ray Van Hoy, I can't remember. Uh, but after that, almost everything I did down there would either be Paul Lyme for the most for the alternative but mostly eddie and then there were a few other drummers who i was fortunate enough to work with who are great drummers but eddie really was like the the uh the guy that i always look forward to playing with down there so here's one other little one this is called little senorita with the green eyes one morning in july a newborn baby cries Her mama holds her tight and hums a 
Spanish lullaby to the tiny, tiny senorita with green eyes. She wore a tattered dress with faded ribbons. She's had it since the day her mama died. The people knew her well in Rosarita. The little senorita with green eyes. No one knew exactly where her home was Or how a child so young learned to survive I saw her on the corner selling flowers A little senorita with green eyes something in her face I recognized. I remembered one sweet night in Rosarita when a dark-eyed Spanish lady held me tight. what the truth was. Time stood still as my heart realized the child I'd never known stood before me the little senorita with green eyes Okay, one more, one more. Give you a chance to hear him. This is called Honky Tonk Amnesia. It's always a good thing. She'd be hurt if she knew that I'd been drinking. Cause one's too much and twelve. Just ain't enough. I'm at the end of the Wi-Fi in this building. She knows how it messes up my thinking. How it makes me look for someone else to love. Sometimes it lasts 
without question Day by day over time I put me And if someone calls She'll tell them That I'm resting While I wonder What I've done And where I've been So that's Scott McQuaig, self-titled album from 1990. And uh, it's fun when people jump in and make recommendations. Um, the only recommendations I ignore is like when somebody comes in and goes, do a Rush song. You know, I'm, I didn't play with Rush. Getty plays with Rush. Um, I have only really done things on this channel that I've worked on. Um, but I appreciate all the, uh, the comments and everything. And, for, and I'm just going to, you know, I see all these other videos. And I never even say it. You know, if, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do. It doesn't cost anything. You know, just hit a button and bam, you're there. Um, but uh, we're sneaking up on uh, just a few more to go for 200,000 people. That would be fantastic. You know, and the last thing I ever expected, uh, starting off just showing a couple of bass parts to Phil Collins' tunes, and here we are all low these... <laughs> many, many months and years later. Um, and I love it as much today as I did when I, and more so because now I have focus and direction. When I started, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Um, but certainly the technology hasn't improved. I'm sitting here staring at my iPhone with my Bose speaker and my laptop uh, playing music. So I'm gonna wish everybody a great day. Um, I've got a, it's a little after 12 now, we leave at two, so I'm gonna put in about an hour and a half of practice. I've got my uh, bass with me, and uh, there's a couple of things that I wanna look at uh, that I noticed from last night's show I wanna tighten up, and another song that we might potentially do that I wanna really dial it in, because we haven't played it live. Um, so, yeah, I try to get some little time in every day before heading off to work, and I will try to make it to the uh, clubhouse if I can. I would love to see everybody there. Um, so take good care. Stay safe. Um, it's, it's scary out there. There's, uh, but we're, we're trying to be as diligent as we can out here with, with COVID protocol to, so that nothing happens to the tour, that we can continue this to the uh, very end. So uh, just take good care and I will see you all tomorrow. Okay, bye-bye. In fact, I'm, maybe I'll film a little. Mountain Winery is really a beautiful venue, so maybe I'll do a little filming today and throw something up from that. Not throwing up from the Mountain Winery. I mean, put something up on. on you know what I'm talking about.